meditate, stay right there. Hallelujah. Think about him. Think about him doing exactly what you've already asked him. Listen, praise if you've already received. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody say,
sorry to decline. Brother Womack, when I was competing, I started declining because I wasn't giving God my best. My best causes me to shift mentally to a mindset that now I'm dominating. Things that used to tangle my feet. The Bible say none shall hold me. But no shall hold me fast. In other words, what used to distract me, what used to hurt me, what used to try to spiritually cripple me, what used to make me cry, what used to make me doubt myself, those things have passed away. Some of you think your girlfriend or your boyfriend wild. 
And you're saying, God, give me glory and power to overcome, okay. Or overcome them. And over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind. I get excited now because there's a promise to me. Look, look at who I made out of. So God created mankind in who? His wife's own, own image. I don't have to look in mirrors no more to identify with who I am. Come on. God has already shown it to me. I'm created in his image. No need to look in mirrors no more. I already know who I am. Tell the neighbor, I'm not lost anymore. I know exactly who I am. He said, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now really, with your permission, I want to turn over to Luke. And I want to invite Luke into the conversation. Chapter 22, uh, verses 3 and 4. Can I do that? Just real quick then. You can have your seat for the remainder of the time, please. I just needed a little permission just to, if we can invite Luke into the conversation. Look what he says. Then Satan entered Judah. Somebody say, oh my God. I ain't the only one Satan been used. Then Satan entered Jesus in Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and what? Discuss with them how he might what? Betray who? Jesus. How he might betray Jesus, one who was created in God's image and after his likeness has suddenly taken on the spirit of betrayal. Father, we thank you this morning. Let your spirit fall fresh in this place. Have your way, God, none of me but all of you. And it is my prayer that no one leaves this place the same way they came. Move in a mighty way, God. I thank you that every ear in here is anointed so they can hear. Every heart is open so they might receive. Lord, and I thank you for the courage and the courageousness, God, that people will leave this place and spread the gospel. No longer will we become spiritually obese. Everything we get, we'll pull back out. We, we thank you for this new harvest. Thank you for the new mindset. Thank you for the fresh anointing. Oh, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. Test two people and tell them, uh, I'm sick, but don't tell nobody. That's the wrong neighbor. Find somebody who are thick and tell them, baby, I'm sick, but please don't tell them. I'm sick. But don't tell nobody. It is my prayer that if it's God's will, we can conclude this today. I want to, before I get started, want to thank God for some of our spiritual family being in the house this morning. Amen. Amen. Brother James Womack and, and Sister Minister Elder Jenny Womack. God bless y'all. Amen. And I cannot leave out my boy. Put your hands together for Brother Jacoby. Everybody loves Jacoby. Amen. They're, they're, they came and blessed us this morning in spirit by way of Maryland. Amen. God bless him. And for those who know, uh, Elder Womack was with us when we first started the ministry. Amen. And she left for one of the only reasons that I agree to let people lead the ministry. A husband. Now this man, I should say, before he was a husband, asked her to marry him. Amen. And I remember when they met, they, it was at a, a, a convention we had. Apostle Miles had this convention. And, 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 and you got to know Sister Jenny, she's soft-spoken, but don't, don't trip on her now. She's deadly with the word. And she's just doing her thing. And it's amazing how she never lowered her standards to be noticed. Jesus. He, he caught her while she was worshiping. The problem with the women, you're trying to buy too many pairs of earrings and get your nails done. You should be working on how to worship. Yeah, because he's going to catch you when you're worshiping. To a man, that's beautiful when, when you worship. And he caught her. 
And it is, it's, it's been, they can tell the story better than I can, but it's been happily ever after, ever since. He was good enough to take her away from home. Somebody said, that's a special man. God bless y'all this morning for being here. Thank y'all. It's a blessing. She's going to come speak to us at the end of service. She has a really nice uh, treat for you, a resource that I think everybody in the house, not only you, but people can actually benefit from. Amen. So I want to make sure that you get to hear her and what God has put on her heart uh, right after offering this morning. Can we do that? Amen. Amen. And it gives me great pleasure. to introduce one of my best friends, little brother, who now has been called into pastoralship. Amen. Pastor Frady, would you stand? Amen. 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 His brother was Victor Frady, one of the best basketball players to come through our high school and one of the most prolific shooters. Amen. This is a pastor. We should be standing. Amen. We got a little better home training than that. God bless you. I'm going to just ask if you would come on up front. That's, that's my only request. We don't sit in the back. Hey, we first partakers in everything. You at home here. Hey, man, you're talking about a great man. He has a ministry not far from that. He's right in the heart of Fayetteville. Hey, Amen. And they're serving on Saturday mornings. Hey, man, great man of God. Thank you for coming. He's a red bird. <laughs> For those who were unfortunate enough to go to Fulton High School, now against Chicago, Brother Bear, I see. But those who were unfortunate enough to go to Fulton High School, you missed a treat. How many know about Fulton High School and didn't even go to Fulton? Hey, man, it's a tough school. You, you know, Fulton, <laughs> I ain't trying to brag, but I will tell the truth. Deacon Dixon, why you not saying that? He went to George. He went to our enemy. But God set his heart on straight, and he's now following the red bird. Yeah. We still have our differences. I don't really want to say this, but I will. You know he's a Georgia Tech fan. It's unfortunate. I'm still praying that demon up out of him. Elder, Elder, we're going to call those things. We're going to cast that thing out of you. You took it of a man to be having a bumblebee on him. I don't know who would root for something that will sting you one time and die afterwards. It has nothing to do with deep. Deep's good. I know his bloodline, Mother Gert, his father, Deacon Dixon, wouldn't have him down there. That they would have all red and black. Though. <laughs> Brother James and Sister Latoya, would y'all stand for me? Amen. Amen. I met them through the way of Sean. Yeah, I, they, they came to visit and do some work with us the last two days um, by way of Orlando, Florida. Amen. Deep into the gospel. So I'm asking we'll stand and give them a hand, please. Amen. This morning. Thank y'all for coming. Daytona. I'm sorry. Daytona. I don't know why I keep trying to put them in Orlando. Maybe God send up a second business for them in Orlando. If you're looking for uh, anything to enhance your brand, pictures, be it memorabilia, anything, they're your people. We, we live in the city of Atlanta, and there's a lot of great people here, but I haven't found one greater than them. They, they, were, worth they were worth coming in. Amen. Amen. And I'm just glad to have y'all know, he, he specializes in media. Amen. Photography, all that camera work, um, he set that up at, at his church, Brother James, and Ask him to come in today and be very critical. Probably won't be too hard. But be very critical. That's the only way we get better. Is when you hear the truth. In, in, in Christianity, we're the only people who believe in repenting but don't want to hear the truth. That we was once in darkness. So I'm glad he's here today. God bless you guys. Thank you all for being here. Any other visitors that I missed that I didn't catch this morning, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. May, may heaven smile upon you uh, as we move forward. Don't want to hold you long, amen, but I do want to dive. Anybody ready to eat? Yeah. Amen. I'm starving. I, I couldn't wait to get here this morning because, like you, I've been sick and at times. I didn't tell nobody. 
And some of the most hard times when I was sick was when I was saved. N not 12 year old saved when I was saved for real though. When I had to come. Not when I was in vacation Bible school and mom and I made you get up there and you went to vacation Bible school and you said whatever the, the, the people had you say so that you could become saved. No, I'm, I'm talking about saved for real when I snotted and cried when I was a grown man with two kids and a wife depending on me and I had nowhere to turn come to church. And God came into my life for real. It wasn't that he was never there. I was just now mature enough spiritually to recognize that I was sick. It's through your relationship with God that it predicates how sick you are. That's the only way out that we can truly rage God. It says in the book of Genesis that we were created in his image and after his likeness, which means that we were created perfect. What or who hindered you? You know, you go out sometimes, and you mean to go out, and I'm not going to stay long, and all of a sudden you go out, and, and then all bad intentions happen. And then you look up, and you say, how did I get in his bed? I don't even know him. <laughs> Let me explain. The children's church is through here. They do a good job with it, but this grown folk church. And we need grown folk freedom. And then we don't need childish messages. We need something grown. Something that I can relate to. Something they can say, ouch. ouch. Yeah. Have, have you ever been, I don't ask you to raise your hand, but you went out and you went out one, one way and you wanted to be home by a certain time and you never made it back home that night. You ended up in somebody else's house. I mean, that's me and women. Just raise your hand. I see a couple of women even raising their hand. Just be honest with yourself. Go ahead and free yourself this morning. That is my prayer. We won't leave the same way we can. You went out and, and, and you ended up staying in somebody else's residence that night up under their sheets with them. And it felt good during the time while you was working on becoming ill. You only got bad and mad when you realized now I'm ill. I'm sick. And it's never about I'm sick. It's how do I get to the point where I become sick? When I was young, I was saved. But what happened when I turned 17, 18 years old and I could start differentiating between what a good time is to a 17 or 18 year old guy? What does that look like? That's when I started realizing that now I can identify with what sickness really is. You, and a lot of people, uh, Pastor Frady, they look good on the outside. Church folk will fool you. Because they know exactly how to shape. They know exactly when to amen. They can sing and make their hands do all kind of wonderful things. Until you bump them by mistake in the prayer line. And they exemplify some things verbally that lets you know they are sick. We all are sick in some way, form, or fashion, and we're sick in ways that penicillin just won't cure. It. Back when I was coming up, you got sick, you got a penicillin shot. I didn't know what I'm talking about. I don't have to dive into it. So yeah, huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your mama and them don't, still don't know. You, you went out and you got a penicillin shot, and then the penicillin shot did what? It cured everything. Every little disease you don't got yourself into, it, it cured it. Pillicilla shots did that for you. Then they got away, you can start taking it by mouth, orally. But, but then something else started coming that was stronger. That penicillin could touch. And it caused us to really have to start running back to God because now all these celebrities and movie stars started catching this thing. And, and we looked and say, I never knew Magic Johnson was sick, but he looked so well in his suits, but on the inside. He was sick. And for a long time, he wouldn't tell me. It was only when, when, when the media got it in LA and he couldn't make the trip over to Utah that then it came publicized that he was sick. And I tell you today that if you keep playing with God, you will be exposed to. Yeah, your, your, your media will come out too. I don't know if your media will become your conscience or your media will become your, your spouse or your children, but somebody will find you and tell you the truth that, baby, you sick. And I know you haven't been telling nobody, but you need to get yourself to a doctor. Yeah, the first thing we say when somebody says, girl, you need to go see a doctor, but when somebody's sinning, we never say nothing about God. When the last time you heard somebody say, girl, you're sinning, you need to go see God. We never say that, but we always tell people who our 
dentist is. I got the best dentist, as if you get some proceeds from them. They don't even give you finder fees in, in, in medicine. But you're always telling people who your physician is. And, and we won't tell nobody who we serve. We, we won't tell nobody who we cry to at night and how we fake and force a smile in front of other people. But you hate your husband. But Rachel, they make it look good in front of people at the church. They make it look good because they worried about imagery more than about healing. Yeah, so their whole hand is in the church, and the closer they get to the car, the harder they squeeze. So they can touch me. I ain't got to fake this no more. Somebody say, I'm sick. I'm sick. But don't tell nobody. If you did a survey in churches as a whole now, how many jacked up, our marriages are jacked up from the floor up, it'll make your mouth open. I promise you, you'll have more marriages jacked up in the church than marriages that are sound. But people won't tell it because of imagery. So you walk around here like a woman with shoes on too tight. Uh, they say, what, well, beauty is painful? But she can't wait to get out the shoes, but they made her look good. You said, why would I have to entice myself and, and, and motivate myself to wear a pair of shoes? That's killing me. That can cause me risk that I could fall. But I would do. You sick. And you just haven't told nobody. Why do we get sick? I know we, we, you got to have something biblical. We get sick, and I think it's, it, it's amazing when I look at this because it says uh, in the Old Testament, it is stated 56 times about sickness. For those who say you don't have to read the Old, the old Covenant, the Old Covenant is just as relevant as the New Covenant. He said, I didn't come, Jesus, I didn't come to do away with the law, the books of the Pentateuch, but to what? Fulfill the law. 56 times, Pastor Frady, in the Old Covenant, it talks about sickness. I say, ooh, 56 times. I can see that because God wasn't as forgiving then. We didn't have something called grace. So I can see that. But then when I look over in the New Testament, I was appalled and shocked that sickness was over there 57 times. Regardless of which covenant you're reading in the Bible, one thing that's a for sure, sickness is in the air. There's no way around it. At some point, you're going to get the bug. You're going to get the I don't want to go to church bug. You're going to get I hate everybody in my house bug. Okay, I'm going to come down the street in a minute. You're going to get uh, I want to kill my boss bug. Yeah. Some of you, I'm going to get my children dead if a child support bug. The bug is going to eventually get you. So you can't run from illness. Back in the old covenant, the difference was back then they called it a plague. When it started dealing with multiple people. But, but there were individuals in, in, in the old covenant that dealt with, with, with illnesses individually. You know, and everybody knows this thing about the woman with the issue of blood. Well, oh, everybody can quote that good. Yeah, she was sick. Uh, uh, yeah, she was out there for, for 50 years, bleeding by herself, lonely. She was sick. Or they can go to blind Bartimaeus. You know, blind Bartimaeus sat right there at the gate. Yeah, he was sick. But, but, but the thing that really got me was this sickness deals with children, too. You see, it, it's not just predicated for adults who sign their name on the church roll or who can quote the 23rd Psalms. It, it's not just for them. When you think about Bathsheba's child and what happened to Bathsheba's child, you know that, that sickness is everywhere. When you think about Moses and the plan of the deaf angel, the deaf angel says specifically, I will kill the one firstborn. Come on, church. Sickness is in the land, it's in the air. You cannot run from it. You have to meet it head on. You, you have a, a, Jesus in the new covenant, when he was coming off the boat, Jarius, who was the religious leader at that time, 
The Bible declared that Jared has met Jesus as he was coming off the boat. And when Jesus was coming off the boat, after he greeted Jesus, the first thing he said was, oh, can you come to my house? My daughter is sick. He didn't ask him, can I take you to lunch? He didn't ask him, let me go around and show you around town like Christians do when they know somebody who's popular. He, he said, can you come to my house? My daughter is sick. Don't matter. You are your child. Sickness is inevitable. But how do I deal and fight this thing that I know is inevitable? The Bible says over in John chapter 6 verse 70. It says, then Jesus replied, have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. Oh my God. Do we have any devils in here? <laughs> this will blow your mind, Sean, when you look at this. And, and Jesus makes sure that he wants you to know that he said this. He don't want nobody to get the credit for a decision he made that he knew man wouldn't understand. I said, is what Jesus replied, I've chosen you twelve, and yet one of you is a devil. Wow. Why would you choose somebody for the campaign that you're getting ready to go on? You choose somebody that's sick. Why would you choose somebody? And everybody know who that was in the twelve. That was Judas. But but what we don't what we don't tell because we're so patriotic and we all love Peter your boy was sick too. And, and let me say this today so I can go ahead and set the church straight and get everybody to say your pastor's sick. We all have shortnesses and shortcomings in our lives and, and faults in our lives. We all need healing in some way, form, or fashion. I couldn't preach up here if I hadn't been a, a, a mainstay in the emergency room of God. I had to go and get something that I can see that God is a healer so I can come back and tell y'all God is still in the healing business. Now you don't want a pastor who's telling you what thus said another pastor. You want somebody who's been through it. Quit marrying people who ain't been through nothing. Then you come out and whine. Need a pacifier, spiritual pacifier. And that pacifier is whoever talked to you. You don't want the word. You just want somebody to comfort you and feel sorry for you. You made the decision. See, illness has its place. Yes, for those of you who have problem losing weight periodically, after you've been sick, you've dropped a lot of pounds, you, I was sick, ooh, I lost a lot of weight. We, we don't even give reference to the, the healing, done it. The first thing we say, I wish I had some real saints in here. First thing we say, ooh, I lost some weight. Uh, ask me how I know. I'm glad you asked. I've done it. Man, look at me, baby. I call my wife. Oh, I, I want everybody to see, baby. Morgan, y'all come in. Look at me. <laughs> then if they don't respond quick enough, I'm. Y'all don't see that? <laughs> I'm giving more glory to a physicality and not blessing the actuality of how I got delivered, yeah, how I got healed. We, we don't do that because once we heal, we keep moving. We don't go back and say, Lord, I thank you for my healing. Now, we'll claim that thing once we sit, call those things which be not as though they were. We say that and then we go around that for two days. We go, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And once you become healed, Jesus who? Jesus who? And I feel bad because... Brother Barry, this thing is in our bloodline. This illness spiritually is in our bloodline. Brother Womack, it started with our true parents. It started with Adam and Eve. It started with them when they decided to go against God. 
sin was invited in. And now it has become a part of us. That's why the Bible says, but uh, cheer when somebody dies, rejoice, and moan and cry when somebody's born because of what your mom and daddy did. Adam and Eve. They started this epidemic of illness. And you continue to search yourself. What have I done? You didn't have to do nothing. You're just a part of the bloodline. He just wants to see which physician you're going to choose. The illness isn't really about you. The illness is about God saying, choose you this day who you might serve. serve. What are you thinking? You want to believe this doctor, this doctor. You going to believe uh, what your cousin said or you going to believe what God said? All right. All right. And I like God's way because God doesn't have a copay. Oh. He doesn't have a copay. We can go to him. He's always open and we can go to him at any time. We can go to God any time to be Deliver. He says it right here in John chapter 6 verse 70. Then Jesus replied, I have not chosen you the twelve, yet you I've chosen one of you that's of the devil. We've been talking for two weeks about icebergs. The iceberg. And in the iceberg we've been talking about how deceiving the iceberg is. How what you see on top is only a fraction of the mass of what's beneath the water. It's just the mass. I mean, you, you, it's only a percentage of what that iceberg really is. What you see on top of water with icebergs is only a tenth of the size of an iceberg. You, you look at this right here. It, it's nice and pretty up top, but when it goes up underwater, it looks dangerous. Ooh, it's dangerous and it looks powerful and it looks assured of itself but it don't want nobody to see it it doesn't want anybody to see it and that's where we are in church that's where you are in your relationships that's where you are with yourself you only show people a tenth of you and there's so much more of you to be put out there on display. Like icebergs, people normally expose what? A small part of them, Jesus. A small part of themselves and generally just the part they what? Wish to show you. I don't understand how people get married so quick nowadays. James, I don't understand how people get married so quick, brother. They look at a 36, 24, 36 and they, they, they never really marry her. They marry the waistline. She's coming down the aisle. He's salivating, not at the possibility of marriage. He's salivating at the opportunity of getting ready to get body exercise. I wish I didn't have to say that. They, they dressed up, paid all that money for him to stand at the altar with the preacher who might be salivating himself. Depending. Because icebergs have no title. Everybody, I wish I had somebody who will stand on that and say, everybody has an iceberg of their own. So while you sitting there salivating, the preacher sitting there, salivate too. Yes. Yes, icebergs. Icebergs. It's amazing how we put so much trust and something that we so know so much little about. Or I should say that we so we know so little about. You you trust people too easy. You just met them and you trust them. Because they showed you what they want. I don't want let me see your baby when you don't have a perm. Okay, okay, I said we got some sedated people in there. Y'all don't want to get in the middle. Uh, let, let me see what you look like when you don't have a girl on. It might be it might be us in a few minutes, y'all. They, they ain't liking this today. They ain't liking the Fourth of July. They don't like these fireworks. Yeah, let me see what you look like with the girl off. I didn't know that many people were living in. Icebergs are dangerous because they only 
show you what they want to show you. So that's why when people get married, it takes five years because you can't you can't placate for so long. You can't placate for so long. Now you might be good at it. You can lie for three years, but eventually you're gonna forget. Because my Bible says good will always overcome evil. And they'll they eventually they'll tell the truth, they go. Babe, I thought you said you had never been there. I, I, I ain't never, did I say that? <laughs> you didn't know he had two kids by two separate women. Uh -huh. Until the mama got tired of not paying child support and she came to the creek. Somebody just say iceberg. Yeah, icebergs will get you every time. Icebergs will make you look foolish. Because we don't take time enough to dig. Now, I know you're saying, well, why did Jesus pick Judas? I'm glad you asked. He picked Judas because he knew what was under the water with Judas' iceberg. He knew that joker was a crook. He knew he was a financial thief. He knew that joker was a liar. He knew he was self-centered. So when Judas came and introduced himself to Jesus, Jesus said, yes. 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 Yes, you're exactly what I need to move forward. And I did not, I knew he loved Judas. Because he loved Judas enough to call him his friend. I'm preaching. He, he called Judas his friend. He said, who is my friend? And everybody was expecting him to say, Peter. He No, Peter's not my friend because like Judas, I also see up under Peter's water that eventually Peter will deny me. Icebergs. Icebergs. Dangerous. You have to be careful these days. Extremely selective yeah. in your decision making. Yeah. Because people can make you see something yeah. that has been fabricated. Yeah. What you see isn't really what you see. Oh, that's a nice car he's driving today. But catching Tuesday. Yeah. I didn't know that car was renting. Enterprise, he had took the sticker off the car. He don't pay me my family. My mama excited. Oh, you see Jimmy talking about him. You see that Camaro he driving there. Oh, you need to stay with him. All about a car that was never his because he only showed you 10%. And it was his for those two or three days. But we do the same thing in church. We, 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 we make people think we're saved. Yeah. We, we make people think we're saved because we want people when we come back, oh, that's such a such she's saved. Huh? You know, if she praying and if she's shaking, then the Holy Ghost is in the church. It ain't in the church she called. <laughs> but that's how Satan do you. The less you know, the more you're exposed to Satan. Yes. Ignorance is expensive. Ignorance is extremely expensive. That, that's why I said all you're getting get understanding because ignorance is expensive. And the more you grow, the, the older you become, you'll realize that the world won't give you nothing. That the world will capitalize off your ignorance. Yeah, the world see you only know 10% of what's going on, so I'm finna dock you. I'm gonna take from that other 90%. Yeah, my, my children go into private school off of your ignorance. You, you've been suppressed because of your ignorance. Because people know right off, you don't know anything. This is how they talk. They, they have no wisdom. They have just knowledge. I, I love to talk to people who, who just have all these degrees and no wisdom. I love to talk to those people because it's just a matter of time before Brother Wisdom sits in. I'm talking about wisdom that comes from heaven. I'm not talking about the wisdom you got from down on the corner. I'm talking about this thing that downloads from God. Because see, that, that, that hurt me in the church. I, I was using knowledge from all these degrees I had. Well, this is what they say in school. And this is what we should do in school. This is how you forecast. It, and this is how you put a budget together. And God said, well, what about my, my budget? I'm your doctor. Huh? What about me? I, I'm not going to even charge you interest because my son already paid for it. But I got to do it this way. And you will find yourself in a holding pattern. 
Yeah, because you're sick. And you won't tell nobody. You're afraid to tell somebody something as simple as, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Adam and Eve put a, put a, put a real strain on us. They, they put a real strain on us with this because they made our bloodline rough. You think about this now. With Cain and Abel. Fresh blood. One of the two sons gets bold enough to turn his back on God after he had been wrong. He still turns his back on God. He got caught to the left and still turns his back on God. Do you know people like that? You have called them in the left and they still try to babble out. They didn't mean it. They got it from Cain. Somebody say bloodline. Blood. You got it from that bloodline. Cain did it. Cain would do wrong and then swear he was doing right. Swear you down he was doing right. Want to fight you for his wrong. I'm right. That, 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 that just, that's amazing to me. How people can do that. It's, it's amazing to me how, how Peter, if you look at Matthew chapter 26 verse 33, I just want to show you a couple of things real quick and we're done. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Peter said, now, now Peter is the head of the disciples. Peter's the one that everybody's kind of reluctant to really get with because Peter got to look crazy in him. You see those people in church where people kind of afraid to talk to that person because that person kind of crazy. You don't want that person to call you out or they'll start prophesying to you in front of everybody and embarrass you. And so you don't want to, I want to deal with them because they sick and, and they'll embarrass me. I don't even want to have anything to do with them. That's how Peter was. Peter didn't want to deal with because Peter would get physical with you. He tells Jesus, I mean, look how confident this guy is. He replies and tells Jesus, even if they all fall away on account of you. How, in, listen, how do you talk to Jesus like that, first of all? Look at, the, look at the B clause. Even if all fall away on account of you. He's telling Jesus, Jesus, if everybody else leave you because of who you is, I never will. I don't know how Jesus was like, how dare you? They're going to leave on account of me, but you're going to stay like you're doing me a favor. <laughs> Peter didn't even realize he was sick. See, that, that's the thing. He didn't realize he was sick. And a lot of us in here don't realize we're sick. I ain't gossiping. I just heard you gossip. Yeah. No, you didn't. What you heard me say was you gossip. Yeah. You're sick. Yeah. You, you, you're backbiting. Yeah. Talking about people. Won't help the needy. Yeah. <laughs> you're the self-centered people. Yeah. Hey, it's amazing when I watch people that are self-centered that say because they're the nucleus, the beginning and the end of every conversation. You can't out talk them. I don't, you looked it up, you're like, I just referenced this in this book. So this is what I'm saying. You, what? You're not even in chemical engineering, but this is what I know. You sick. I'm sick. I have some, some, some issues. I told you last week I'm proud of it. I'm getting better. My wife has helped me tremendously. And one of the things she did is say, to cure your illness, I'm going to take it away from you. So she don't let me go grocery shopping with her. <laughs> because I have a, a something wrong with me mentally. <laughs> I'm telling you, when I got that little red buggy and I'm counting every dime of everything I got, I got to get a little thing of meal, a little thing of flour. I got to get some tissue that I can't get Scott's tissue. It's too expensive. I love Scott's, but I can't get it because I'm in between paint. I wish I had somebody in here. Yeah, I want chicken breast, but all I can do is eat chicken legs. I can't even get chicken wings. My family grew up on thighs and backs. And I see somebody up there with a boyfriend. Hair just freshly braided. Brand new iPhone, the new one, like the twelve hundred dollar. 
and she got on some Walmart flip flops and he sang it. Two buggies. And I'm looking at my wife and I'm looking at them and I just think about all the hell I just went through at work. Something on the inside of me just start working on the outside of me. And before I know it, I've got lost. And, and I do like anybody else do. I start dragging people into the conversation. I get somebody back, can you believe this? <laughs> now my wife is the good angel, so she's always, baby, hush your mouth, don't No, 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 I'm sick of it, reading. I can't do this no more. We paying for that food. I don't mind people being on governmental assistance, but just make sure you're doing something with it. Be in school or taking up a trade or something. Don't be at home every day watching the stories, and then I'm out here going to work every day trying to figure out if I'm having enough gas to get home. I'm having to cook enough at the house so I can take lunch with me to work because I work downtown. You don't get nothing downtown for under $10. So I got to make sure, baby, um, put an extra half a cup of rice in there. We ain't got but eight pieces of chicken. Then just put some more rice in there. Our rice out today. I I'm sick. Y'all, please pray for me. I got issues. That's one of my issues. I don't have a lot of them, but that's one of them. I, I just feel like it's not fair. You know, and they flaunt everything. I mean, they got every name, brand, everything. Uh -huh. Big things of frosted flakes. I love frosted flakes, but I, sometimes I have to result to corn flakes. I, I would put the sugar on. I never do the sugar the right way. Most of the sugar end up at the bottom of the bowl. Who knows what? I'm sick. I just wanted to give you an example of what, what my sickness looks like. That, that's my illness. I'm real sick, too, with people who talking about the president and don't vote. Uh, that, that's really, that's, I'm on the surgery table with that. We're always complaining about what the president is doing, but it's the same people, Dominique, who won't even go out and vote. They say my vote won't count. Tell it to the people who was bitten by the dogs. To the people who was watered with the water holes. Independence, are we really free? And they still vote on us to vote every 20 years? Because you have a good family. 
Quit apologizing because your goods are proper. They do speak good grammar. Quit apologizing. We go, hey, uh, your children so proper. That's just good English. Yo, you just ain't heard. <laughs> you pay all this money for your children to speak good grammar, then you go out here and try to make excuse as to why they. Right, 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 right. Now the children confused. Should I? Should I not? Because <laughs> mama out here now trying to cover up who I really am. Jesus goes out, I mean, uh, he goes out here and denies Jesus three times. He denies Jesus three times. Like icebergs, people normally expose a small part of themselves and generally just the part they wish to show. The essence of survival is being able to see the iceberg before it hits you. You can see danger if you take time to look. If you take time to look, you can see danger. You can see it, but most of us get so caught up or distracted by something that's really not a priority. And we miss the opportunity to elude danger. And God says in what it is, uh, Lamentations on Leviticus, I'm sorry, that he says, I will always forewarn you of trouble. That's what he says in the book of Leviticus. He says, I'll always forewarn you. So if God forewarns us and we don't take heed to what God is saying, whose fault is it? I'm confused now because when it happens, then I go back, God, why me? And God said, I tried to warn you. I tried to show you that ain't the right way. There's a way that seemeth right, but it's not the way. This thing of icebergs and this thing of being sick is like a roller coaster. It, it can be troubling because one minute you can be up, huh. next minute you can be down. Yes, I was talking to a bishop Tuesday night. We talked a whole hour just laughing and talking. Next thing I know, I get a phone call uh, Friday. He's been in an accident. Yeah. Had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Just that quick. Life is a roller coaster. Yeah. You're going to get sick sometime. Things are not going to go your way. You're going to be challenged. You're going to be stretched and challenged. That's the only way you're going to change. We have a, the highest divorce rate ever in the church. The divorce rate in church now is, is now higher than the divorce rate on the streets. How can that be? How can the church become so ill? Well, I guess the Bible says judgment shall start in the church. But we don't address those issues. We don't come to church with our spouse and say, we got problems, let's go to the altar. You know what we do? <laughs> and have the audacity to look at other people strange when they're going to the altar. When you're in a blazing fire, your, 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 your children got you going crazy. Yeah, because you can't be healed, because you can't admit that you're sick. The first thing doctors do when you're sick is they take whatever, they assess you for your vitals, they go out with your blood, get a sample, then they do what? They never start working on you until they come back and do what? Tell you what they have assessed. They'll come back and say, ma'am, your, your blood pressure's low, or you got such and such, you got too much calcium, or this is what is causing this. Then they'll come back after that and tell you what? This is what we're going to do. They never come in and just do it. They have to tell you first so you will what? know how you are sick or what's causing you to be sick. The same in the church. You have to understand why you're sick. So sometimes you, sometimes you stay in the storm a little longer than others because you don't realize yet, Jesus, that you're sick. And you know, I just can't shape this. It's because you don't realize. And the godly physician is standing there saying, once you realize, I can go ahead and start curing you. But you ain't asking for my help, and you're not admitting that you're sick. First thing you do when you go to Alcoholic Anonymous, you have to go in and do what? State your claim. Hi, my name is and I am. Try when you go home today with your family. Make, make your house better. Get everybody in line outside the house. Daddy, you stand in the house, and you go in the house, and then you talk outside the house. Everybody, they're going to say it's hot. Tell them, shut up. Listen, just, we finna make this better. 
I'm, I'm such and such. I'm Clarence Winfrey. I'm your daddy. And I've been sick. I've been sneaking fifths in here and drinking them while your mother's sleep. No more. I'm getting delivered. And then the mama come in, and the daddy stands over to the side. She say, hi, my name is Clarice Stevenson, and I've been sick. I've been sleeping with the mailman when my truck driver was going on the road. Man, like this don't happen. Now, if I was saying something out the way, y'all would be like, that's a little fiction, that's a little far-fetched. But this is true. Yeah, or, or, or what about this? Let me make it real then. Hi, my name is Clarice Johnson, and um, I'm sick. I've been sleeping with your daddy's best friend. <laughs> See, James, we like to quote the Bible, but we don't like to talk about what the Bible's talking about. The Bible gives us scripture so that we can reference the reality that's taking place in our lives. Go home and try it. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. Pain. You, you, when, when you're dealing, when you're dealing with illness, you don't deal with pain. It, it's inevitable. Jennifer Hudson lost her mother, a brother, and her nephew, all in the span of three days. Pain. The illness was brought to her through another. Oprah Winfrey had to work through demons to arrive at her post. People don't realize that she was sexually abused at the age of 10 by several family members. Not just one, but several. And I know I'm standing here today and preaching this, but some of y'all have been uh, sexually molested or felt on by an uncle or a granddaddy or somebody that, that wasn't your husband. She went through the same thing. Uh, she, she became pregnant at 14 years old, lost the baby. Talking about pain, what, what it means when you're sick. Yeah, she lost the baby after giving birth to it. But look at what she said. She, she said, having the secret out was liberating. Oprah Winfrey says, I wasn't cured from these demons until I verbalized it or confessed it. Yeah, Oprah, O-W-N, network. She said, I had problems too. But I had to confess them before I can what, be delivered from them. I have to admit that there's something living inside me that wasn't invited called a demon. I don't even know why I act like I act. I trip myself out sometimes. Something in me. But once you start verbalizing it, once you confess it, now you're ready to be healed. You're ready to be delivered. And you're ready to be what? Set free. Liberation came on it when she told it. She was at the point she didn't care. Because when you're really sick, you don't care how you get healed. You don't care how you look. You don't care what, it, what nobody say. All I do is give me the shot, dog. Yeah. Mr. Wynn, we got nothing. <laughs> True story, Fraley. I had, I, before I had the second surgery on my knee, I just had to get it drained periodically because I was still drinking. Drink it up some. I'll drink, then go to the, to the doctor, get my knee drained, go back out there. Who would feel better? Let him stick some steroid up in there and go and drink like a funky monkey. I'm just trying to get somebody delivered, Jim. I don't know why they're looking at me like they're going to make me come across. I've been on the cross. Then I would lay up there on the table, my wife would go with, and I had got so accustomed to my routine of sickness here. Once I go in the doctor's room, they call me back, Mr. Wayne, how you? I go on to the back, he had a little uh, Vietnamese lady to work with. I didn't care, I just pulled my clothes down in front of her, get up there on the bed, she'd be, oh, Mr. Wayne, I, I didn't care. 
She said, oh, Mr. Williams, wait a minute, honey. I get the doctor. You need to be swole that big. Can't put nothing on me. The last little bit of energy I had, I used to get up on the bed, on that little bed, to think that I'm going to get healed. When I come back down, I won't come back down the same way I went up. Do it now. I sit there, and I used to watch them. That needle be so long, they stick it in there. And at first, I'd be, Ooh. But once that thing started draining, I see how many tubes that, that green stuff come out. I was so sick mentally. I was rejoicing because now I can get back out there with my cut buddies and hang out and, and do the thing that I thought normal people did. I was sick. Now, now all this was happening while I was an elder in my church. That, that's why I preach it so hard and say titles don't mean nothing. Titles just help you with the structure and organization of whatever public place you're in or public sector you're in trying to conduct the service. That's about as far as that goes now because they'll tell you one thing and do something else. They'll tell you, oh, you need to live right and, and preach you down from the pulpit and they're out there sleeping with everybody. Sick, man. Sick. It's amazing. Last thing and we're done. We use God to run from God. When you sick, you use God to run from God. You have to diagnose the problem and see what symptoms are showing to show that you're unhealthy. I use God to run from God. Yes, I, I use him to run from him. So how do I use God to run from God? I stay in church. I stay busy in the church. I'm just going to preach here. That's it. This is going to be the most five, six, seven minutes of, of, of the whole sermon. Using God to run from God. Staying busy in the church. I stay busy in the church, but I don't have God in me. I can tell you everything that goes on in the church, but, but I can't tell you my relationship with God. Yeah, yeah, reading Christian literature, devoted prayer time, Bible study, you do all this stuff. These activities become detrimental to Christians at times because we use them unconsciously to escape pain. We, we use all these things in the church to escape the pain of our reality that I'm sick. You can go to church every week, but if you don't do what the Bible says, once you get there, you're going to leave the same way you came. Amen. You're going to leave the same way you came. Using God to run from God happens when I create a great deal of God activity in order to avoid difficult areas in my life. That's sad. But it's easy to do, and it's a harsh reality. I know I am spiritually sick, and I'm talking about iceberg behavior. When I do God's work to satisfy me and not him. Wow. I, I know that I'm spiritually sick when I use God's work to satisfy me and not him. Ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing in the church? I work the camera. Why are you working the camera? <laughs> I, I'm a deacon. Why are you a deacon? Huh? You just want to be nosy and count the money. This, I know exactly how much we got in the church. I got power. You got power, you count money. <laughs> Doing things in God's name that he never asked you to do. Come on. Come on. People coming around. Don't be like people hug all on you when you're trying to get your breakthrough. You, you shake it again. They want to hug you real quick and hold. David, let me be free. I'm trying to get free. You, did God didn't tell you to do this. You did this on your own. Because if God would have said it, he would have confirmed it with moi. Yeah. God's name he never asked you to do. The Lord told me to come and pray. Stop lying on God. And then you prophesy, and then you make them leave the church because what your prophecy is is far away from what they're dealing with. I tell the ministers all the time, when you go to pray for people that God ain't speaking to you, just ask them. What do you need prayer for today so we can touch and agree? 
There's nothing wrong with that. But quit trying to shine on God's time. Shine on God. Pray about God doing my will, not me, supersede his will. That's something we need to pray about. God, I need to learn to do your, your will. We need to learn to demonstrate Christian behaviors. So, this is what we do. A lot of people learn Christian behaviors. So significant people would think well of them. We want to be in the circle, so when we go around this group of people here, then we're saved. Your, your hello and everything changed when you get with this certain group of people here. Yeah, you, you don't, you know, what everybody else, what up, man? Yeah, yeah, what up? Holla at your boy. You get around these people here. God bless you. How you doing, Tommy? Bless you, God. Have a smile upon you. Because these people are prestigious. So now you want to change your image. Instead of just being who you really are. If you were saved all the time, you'll be, you wouldn't have to worry about changing. You'll never have to worry about forgetting who you are. Because you're the same person all the time. Yeah, face focusing on certain theological points out of concern for my fears and unresolved emotional issues rather than out of concern for God's truth. We have a lot of people do this one. Focus on certain theological points out of concern for your own fear. You, what, you, what is it saying is you will say the, the two scriptures you know, everything always evolves back to them two scriptures. Because through those two scriptures, you can build conversation. You ever seen people like that? I, I don't care what you're talking about, man, my rent do. You, you know, God healing everybody. <laughs> because those are two scriptures you know. So that's what you're using when somebody's really ill. They're really sick. So that's what you're doing. You're using theological points that you heard a preacher say at the end of something. You never got the content of it. And now you got somebody else going astray. Tell somebody, I'm sick, man. I'm sick. That's why I tell people, buy the CDs. Go back and watch it. Make sure you write it down. Learn it! Yeah. Learn it so you won't be the problem. You won't be the plague that's going around injecting people. Amen. Causing them to become what? Sick. Using biblical truth to judge and devalue others. That's an iceberg all in us. Shout by myself. That's what we're doing now. So using biblical truth to judge others and devalue others. Now, you don't want nobody to say that about you, but you know what they, you married, but your is shaky. You know she's been over here struggling with um, Brother Tommy. And every time you come around her so that you can feel better, you degrade her. That's an abomination what you and Tommy do. That's an abomination. And when she can look at you and say, yeah, and that thing, what you're playing with over there, that's fabrication. Because that ain't no bit more of a marriage than Ronald McDonald still living. I tell somebody I'm sick. But I just didn't tell nobody. Okay, this one right here, you're going to like this one. Two more and we're done. Exaggerate my accomplishments for God to compete with others. Brother Walt Matt, I know up there in Maryland, y'all don't see these type of people. They all down in the dirty south. Where everybody's exaggerating their come line. Look at God, what God did for me. Your cousin gave you that. You got that by default, your aunt died and left you in the wheel. But you'll put this out. Look, all my accomplishments, you, you exaggerate your accomplishments for God to compete with others. You, you put all these things out there. You dress a certain way to try to impress people. You notice most people that are really wealthy don't put on all those suits. They dress like this every day. Ted Turner still drive an old 154. All that money, James. But they're not worried about what man say. They know who they are. They know what their value is. So they don't have to worry about man allowing them to get sick. They stay right in their lane. And if you stay in your lane, man, healing is on the way. You, you don't have to do this and exaggerate your accomplishment. God bless me, girl. God, how he bless you? He just blessed me. Listen, there's so much competition going on in church. Not this church. But I've been to churches where there's a lot of competition going on. Um, uh, Brother Frazier got a new Cadillac. Uh, and everybody been watching the next six months. None of them going to have a new Cadillac. 
I've been to churches like that now. Everybody, everybody, you can't wait to see. First lady got a hat on, and so sister um, Veronica over here gonna sit there. She's gonna put her hat on. Yeah, they're gonna hat it off. <laughs> we exaggerate our accomplishments to try to show people that we have arrived. But he never said nothing about your accomplishments. He said, let your light so shine, the man said in what? Do I get the glory? We talked about this in a way, uh, making pronouncements like the Lord told me I should do this. I'm, I'm always leery when people say that. The Lord told me to do this. The Lord told me, I, did he really tell you this? <laughs> did, did he give you instructions with it? You sure that was the voice of the Lord? Because you ain't never heard God for nothing until it was time for your increase. It amazes me how people already hear from God when it's time for increase. You hear from God more so when it's time for work. The reason I know that, and I'm done. The reason I know that is because in the book of Genesis, the first thing God gave man was a woman. The first thing God gave man was work. The first thing you're going to hear is work from God. I know y'all want to jump and mess it, but this is the truth. So I don't know who you hear. I don't know who it is. But be careful when you put those things out there. To try to shine. Exaggerate the truth. To try to fit in. To lie. So that you'll be accepted. Illness will come. We talk behind God and do all these miraculous things until it's time for us to fight. Fight means living the truth. Being stretched but not quitting. Being stretched and yelling but not retiring. Not throwing in the white towel. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. And I know it didn't get tough till you really became a child of God. Before the end of your life like mine, it was gravy. I, I don't understand how once me and my wife, when God told us about the church and my pastor confirmed it, how our life just went to hell. It was only then that our house went into foreclosure. I thought I was sick. It was only then both cars got repoed. Making the same amount of money, Tricia, and everything's being taken away, man, something wrong. That's when things start happening for you, is when you totally dedicate your life to Christ because he's trying to remove the things that once were your God. He has to make sure he stay in the confines of his equation. I have no other God before me. So the first thing he do is help you remove anything that was in his way. Because God don't like mess. He doesn't like clutter, so he's going to get all that out the way and say, I'm going to get all that out the way, and then I'm going to refurbish you. I will replenish in due season. This time, you are have and have joy with it. Yeah, I won't bring burdens with it. I won't, I, 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 won't, I won't choke you out with it and make you work three jobs with it because I provide it. But he says too much is given, much is required. So if you truly want to walk Christ-like, if you're really at the point in life you say, you know what, this 4th of July week here is truly the beginning of my independence because I'm changing my life today. And it's not that I'm a bad person. I'm not that far off, but there's room for improvement as we stand. Put your hands together for God's word. <laughs> Whoever it may be this morning that says, I need, I need prayer for power. I'm doing great, but I need power to go with what God got for me. This vision is too big. And that's how God likes it. He likes to give you visions that are big. You, if you're asking God for anything.